Hello, mute. I mean, Jeanne. Okay, we have a couple things to talk about. Oh, yes. Yes, we do. <laughs> oh, this is it's so strange to ask these questions through blocks that I'm having her look at. That, hmm. But they're not even written by me. They're written by someone else who hates her. It's like I'm talking by deferred proxy through a... I don't, I don't know. It's, like, weird. Anyway. Hey, Yane, what's up? What is this? You talked to Mute? Uh, yeah. I've been talking to Mute for, like, the past two hours. I don't know what she told you, but... You really shouldn't listen to her. All she ever did was gossip. And I'm certain she hasn't changed a bit since back then. Please, don't trust her. She just spins everything to make everyone look bad, no matter what. Please, promise? Oh. I can't... I can't promise not to talk to her. No. I'm not gonna promise not to talk to her. This is what she's asking, right? Wait, don't trust her. Please don't trust her, she just spins everything to make everyone look bad, no matter what. What is she asking me to promise? I think she's asking me to promise not to trust her. That I can promise to, I thought she meant don't talk to her. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't trust her at all. So, I promise. Thank you. I really appreciate that. At least you give me a fair chance. Well, if you show me one of her questions, I'll tell you the truth. But I don't think it's what she'll expect. So, how are you doing? <laughs> well, to be honest, nervous. I'm really, really nervous. It's just, you're the first person I've talked to in so long. I'm really happy about that. But, well, I'm exposing a lot. I know you promised to trust me and all, so thanks. It's just, this is all really new to me. But it's good. I'm glad. I wouldn't be so nervous if I wasn't happy you were there to listen. Hyane, I don't even think you describing whatever happened around this mass murder thing could make you any less adorable. Don't worry about it, okay? As long as you didn't kill more than, like, two children... Uh, ...and one adult... I ...I'll still find you adorable, okay? How do you feel about me? Well... Hmm... All right, let's just get right into it then. How do you feel about me? Well, wow, whoa, whoa, why is it all staticky? Uh, something's going on. Wow, that's a tough question. What? What's happening? I mean, you seem you seem like a really good person. I think I could call you a friend. You seem to be a really good listener. I like that. Does that answer your question? Let me go back. I think I could call you a friend. She didn't quite answer it. I mean, kind of. She said I could call you a friend, but she didn't say I do. So, no? Oh. I'm sorry. I'd explain better if I could. Are you upset? No, I'm, I'm fine. Okay, good. Just checking. Sorry, I'm not really sure what I'm doing wrong here. I wish I could know. I guess whatever your question was, it's just going to have to go unanswered. Sorry. No, you did fine. Why is it all staticky? Yeah, what the hell's going on? Hyone, what's happening? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, what the f- it's getting worse. Right, right, uh, well. Remember what I said, that I'd never interrupt you unless there was something really, really wrong? Because that's annoying and I don't want to bother you, but... Look, I don't want to scare you here. It's your fault. Uh, this isn't your fault, but we have a really big problem. Yes, we do. I'm sure you've noticed the static on the line, yes? I was wondering what was causing this, so I checked, and it's, well, 
Look, don't panic here, please. But it's, uh, well... A reactor meltdown in progress. Okay, yeah. I'm not gonna freak out at all. That perfectly normal. I'm gonna blow up. Sure. Great. I'm really sorry. It's... We've been running in low power mode for so long, and that was fine. But when you established communications, everything started back up again. Which should have been fine. Except it's been centuries since the last maintenance job was done, and... I'm really... I'm not really sure what's wrong yet. I'm not going to lie to you. This is bad. This is really, really bad. I don't know if you're really aware of how this works, but... We're running on nuclear fission. And, uh, it looks like we've got about 20 minutes before total meltdown. It's already running really, really hot right now. I'd wish I'd noticed sooner. I'm so sorry. Oh, there's a countdown! But, well, let me put it this way. The ship is about 20 minutes away from exploding. Uh, can you make it out of range within 20 minutes? I... I don't... I have no fucking clue. How fast is my ship and what's the explosion radius? Uh... Well, both are true. I mean, maybe not. Uh, maybe not? I don't really know much about nuclear reactors, but yeah, that's what I expected. Don't panic, though. I can walk you through shutting it down. Just stay calm. Everything will be fine. <sighs> okay. Alright. Talk me through it, Yane. What I'll need you to do is drop the terminal and disable the nuclear reactor. Okay, I did see those commands in the console. If everything's working properly, it should be that simple. Uh, I mean, I'm sure it won't be. This is a really old ship, and clearly already one thing has gone horribly wrong. No kidding. Anyway, your first step is to at least try. Okay, let's do it now. Um, alright, what are my commands? Reactor, power control, reactor. What is that? Reactor action. Enable, disable. Alright. Oops, <laughs> re recoat? What the fuck is that? Reactor, disable. No backup power supply is active. Disabling reactor now will permanently terminate your connection. Are you sure you want to continue? No. No backup power supply is active. Well, what about power control? What is that? Action target subsystem. Emergency controls of critical subsystems. Enable, disable, list. Multiple systems can be enabled, disabled in a single line. Hold on, can I do this? Can I do power control list? Your usage is at 99%. Holy crap! Currently enabled subsystems. Bulkheads. Bulkhead seals. Oh, fuck. Oh my god. Let me save it. Okay, um, what does all this say? The usage is at 99%. Currently enabled subsystems. Main computer controls main functionality. Of course, do not ever disable. Rail. Rail internal transit system for rapid access across decks. Well, I don't need that, right? Organic waste matter recycling. I don't think I need that. Wait a minute. So I don't need these. Like, uh, not currently in use. So hold on. Hold on. So core 1 and 2 is for Mute and Hyane. Alright, so there's some, some of the stuff I could disable. Alright. So core 3, 4, 5, and 6. Let me just see how this works. Um, shit, how do we do this? Target subsystem. Multiple systems can be enabled disabled in a single line. So how do I do that? Power. Control. Disable. Core. 3. Do I do, I do a, a comma? Core 5. Uh, 5, core... 6... Wait, 5, 4... Yeah. Wait a minute. Wait, hold on. Three, three, four, five, six. 3, 4, 5, 6. Core 4, 5, 6. Oops, I messed up the last one. Core 3 is not a valid subsystem. <sighs> 16 minutes. Power. Control. Disable. 
core three. Okay. Power, control, list. 79%. I'm not exactly sure what this is. Um... Wait a minute, currently disabled subsystems, subsystems, life support. What the fuck? Why is that disabled? Um... Power... Con control... Enable... Life... Support. Okay. 80%. Like, what am I... What can I enable that I don't have... Like, what do I need to do here? Um... Hold on, advise me. Advise me, please, Hyane. Advice, please. What you need to do is drop to the terminal and disable the nuclear reactor. I already tried that. If everything's working properly, it should be that simple. Well, it's not. I mean, I'm sure it won't be... Yeah, I've already said that. I already tried. Or did you already try? I tried. Ah, curses. Of course it couldn't be that simple. Um, very well, let me try to take account of the ship's systems, see if I can't figure out what's stopping you. Ah, that's pretty bad. Right, very well, I know the problem is. Please tell me. So here's the thing, there's two power systems on the ship. One's a nuclear reactor, the other as well is called a power storage system. It doesn't really generate anything, it's just a battery, basically. Okay, let's talk really, really fast, okay? It's just a battery, just a battery, okay. And that's what the ship's been running off in low power mode, and that was fine, except restoring the communications totally drained it. Gee, ship goes 600 years of just running with running me with no problem, but send a few radio signals and everything goes to hell. Anyway, I see what the error was now. If you turn the reactor off right now, everything will shut down forever, because it can't fall back on the power storage system. Oh, I see. But don't worry, don't worry, don't panic. There's a backup. If you switch to that, it should be quite alright. Right, so all I have to do is switch to the power storage system to use the secondary battery instead. Okay, how do I do that? Then you'll be able to disable the nuclear reactor, uh, the reactor safely. Okay, how? Uh, fine. I don't remember seeing that. But okay. Hold on. Help. Help. Power control. Copy PS. What is PSS? Oh, oh, that's it. Switch battery enable disable. Override of power storage system. Disabled. We'll use primary battery when enabled. Power usage at 80%. A secondary battery remaining. Wait a minute. Hold on. Okay, so I need to... So it's disabled right now, and if it was enabled, it would use the primary battery. Okay, so I need to switch it and then enable it, but I don't think I'm going to be able to because power usage is at 80%, so I need to turn that down. Okay. Well, first things first. PSS switch battery. Active battery changed. We'll use secondary battery when enabled. Alright, let me just try this. I don't think it'll work. Uh, PSS enable. Insufficient power and active battery to meet power demands without reactor. Okay. So we need it at 20% at most. 20%. 20%. Well, gravity, artificial gravity for all habitable decks. I don't need gravity, and that takes a shit ton. Power, control, disable, right, disable. I think so. Gravity. What else can I disable? So wait, well, fuck. Hold on, hold on. I need to crunch some numbers. Controls main functionality and cores do not ever disable. 7%, 5%, 5%. So if I keep both AIs and the main computer, which I have to... Am I going to have to choose between Hyun-A and Mute? Um, anyway, we have 10%, 17%, so I have 3% to spare. Maintain proper atmosphere. I need that. 18%. 18%. I have 2% to spare. Okay. Hmm. 
providing breathable air. I need that. So I'm going to have like 1% to spare here. Alright. So, let me do this in order. Bulkheads need that. Communications don't need that. Need that, need that. Uh, docking system for pass passenger transport. Might as well leave that on, whatever. Gravity, don't need that. Life support, need that. Main computer, need that. Rail, do not need that. Sensors, don't need that. Can't afford it anyway, doesn't even matter. Waste, don't need that. Boom. Wait, external radio-based communication array will permanently terminate your connection. No. Shit. Hold on. Alright, give this to me again. What am I missing? I need 6%. Oh, fuck. I need communications. I need the main computer. Wait, I don't need life support, right? Because I'm not actually on... on, right? And th there's no one alive, right? So there's no reason to leave that on. Maintaining proper atmosphere. I don't want to fuck it up. Okay, well, I have to disable one of the AIs. That's guaranteed. Guaranteed. So I'm obviously going to disable Mute. Because I trust Hyane a lot more. Huh. Okay. Power. Control. Disable. Core 1. Sorry, Mute. I'll bring you back up at some point. On volatile media. If unpowered, all data will degrade within 24 hours or less. Oh, fuck! Well, there's still time, right? I mean, this isn't taking place over days, right? Let me save. Um... I have no choice, right? Main computer, 7%. Communication, 6%. That's 13%. I, I have to disable one of the AIs. I need this, and I need this. It only leaves enough room for one of the AIs. I, it's, I've got to do it, yes. I have 24 hours. It's, it's okay. Working. Core 1 has been disabled. Okay. PSS. Power usage is at 21%. God damn it. Alright. Um, one thing. A docking system for passenger transport. Let's turn that off. Alright, PSS, enable. Enabled, using secondary battery. Okay, reactor. Reactor, what is it, reactor, disable? Reactor, disable. We'll safely fall back on PSS if reactor disabled. Continue, yes. Reactor's going down, this may take a minute. Initiating reactor shutdown sequence. Oh. I have 24 hours. 24 hours. I haven't been spending that long reading logs. Disabled. Logging disabled, engaging low power mode, now. Success. Remaining subsystems transfer to power supply system. Okay. Why is it all staticky? Why, why is it all staticky? Shouldn't it be fixed? Alright, that looks fine. This is the slowest console ever. Reactor is currently disabled. Okay, Hyane, what's going on? Hyane! Alright, you did it. The reactor is now disabled. Uh, And, uh, oh geez, oh no, we still have a problem. Yes, we do. It's, it's still at a critical temperature. God damn it. Well, the good news is you're safe now. 
I'm not, though. Even if there's no nuclear explosion, it's just just the heat alone can do enough damage to the computer systems to, well, kill me. And this is really bad. Yes, it is. Please, you have to figure out something to deal with the excess heat. I'm already I'm already suffering from serious damage. Some subsystems just aren't responding. My word, I feel like I did when I was alive. I feel like I'm dying. Please, you have to do something. What the fuck do I do? Ah! Okay, save again. Help. What's what's here? Anything here? Um I need to cool it down. SU. What is SU? Oh yeah, yeah, it's that. What's copy? Whoops. Target core. Source core, target core. Any AI program transferred will be unexecutable until stored in own core. Do I have a core to store it into? Fuck. Uh, I, fuck, I have five minutes. What about download? Will permanently turn... Oh, yeah, that's... No, 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 no. No AI personalities will be done. No. It's too hot. She's going to be damaged. I need to transfer her, correct? But what do I transfer her to? Is there anything here for cooling? Docking, rail, gravity. I mean, transferring her to another core isn't going to do anything, right? There's nothing here about cooling. Fuck. I mean, I don't know how to copy her to my own computer. I don't think I can. I could transfer her to another core, but what's the point? Transfers data stored in source core into target core. Kane would like to urgently speak to you. Yes, please. Uh, whoops. The fuck do I do? I've got it. I know what you can do. Please tell me. Quickly, enable the bulkheads. Enable emergency life support. Okay. Bulk. Um, life. Oh, I'm gonna. Am I gonna go on board? Life support. Then disable. Enable bulkheads, enable life support. Then disable bulkheads. Okay, why? There's not enough safe air left on the ship to actually keep anyone alive, but it should be enough for venting the excess heat into space. Oh. Oh, oh, oh I see. Quickly, there isn't much time. Okay, I see. I see. <sighs> okay, um... Enable bulkhead and life support. God, why is it so fucking slow? Scroll faster! Enable bulkhead and life support. Bulkhead and life support. Wait, it's already, uh, it's already done. So the only thing I need to do now is just disable a bulkhead. Okay. Power. Control. Disable. Bulkheads. Atmosphere is being vented into space. Ha! Ah. Good thinking, scientist Hyone. Very good. Um, should I re-enable it? Eh, might as well leave it, I guess. You did it! You did it! The nuclear reactor is now both completely deactivated and at a safe temperature. Or safe. I was pretty scared there for a moment. I mean, it's not that I didn't think you could... 
It's just... The thought of actually dying for good was... Scary. It was scary. But you did it. And I'm fine now. Thank you so much. I'm sure you're breathing a little easier too, right? Well, that was close. I think uh, we both really deserve a break from the serious business, don't you agree? Are you trying to deflect me away from asking those questions? I think she is. But... But... I'm gonna agree with her, because that was very stressful. Very much so. I thought so. Whew, really, my... My word, that was a close call. And there's actually something I've been thinking about for a while that I wanted to ask you about. And, well, I had sensors working before. I've seen your ship. I know it's only big enough for one person. It sounds awfully remarkable that you could have a ship like that just for yourself. I just mean... In my time, we were using generation ships. And that was incredibly state-of-the-art. So, is that normal? Do you do this all the time? Go on strange adventures by yourself in deep space? Uh, pretty much, yeah. Wow. That's really amazing. Remarkable, really. You see, when I found out that I was going to get put into stasis, to wake up far later, that was the future I always dreamed about. One that was full of amazing things, like... I don't know, holograms, miracle medicine, ships that travel faster than light, colonies on other planets. I just had the, had the best thought. Wouldn't it be awesome if I could take hyun -A, download her into my ship, and keep her as my awesome, adorable scientist sidekick as we go on crazy space adventures? Oh my god, that would be amazing. That's sort of amazing. I mean, I've never liked science fiction. It's just too unrealistic. But when I was a kid, I figured it'd still be fun to live in it. Imagine my surprise. <laughs> no kidding. But it sure sounds like you're from that future. Oh, sorry. I'm rambling, aren't I? It's just... The idea of finally getting that perfect future that I was denied, traveling with someone in deep space, well, that sounds awfully romantic. Sorry, I'll stop now. Let's get back to the serious business. Okay, back to the questions. Here we go. Question three. Why don't you... <laughs> what? Why don't you treat me with more respect? Mute, fuck you. She has been perfectly respectful. What do you really look like? Hmm. Yeah, is her current avatar what she looked like? Or is it completely different? I am curious. Well, about a few thousand lines of assembly code and a few gigabytes of memories, I suppose, sitting on a hard drive somewhere. I don't really know what that looks what that looks like. Oh, uh, I guess you actually meant before I died, didn't you? Yes. <laughs> well, I was 13 years old when I woke up, and 16 when I died. So, well, I looked younger, but I wasn't really all that different. Just shorter and, I guess, uh, smaller in other places, too. <laughs> Everyone always did say I was pretty, though. Even when I was really young. So just, I guess... Picture a shorter version of me without the glasses and with my hair in some dumb braid or another, in a handbuck, and that's pretty much it. I never really got to dress up the way I wanted to. Even... This is the first time I've been able to wear my school uniform since I was 13. Before I got put into stasis. How silly is that, being excited about wearing a uniform? And, I mean, you know how much I was into cosplay? I never really had a chance for that when I was alive. Why do you even ask? What are you thinking? Uh, I, I was just curious. You look good. Ah, well, thank you. Uh, anyway, we should get back to the more serious stuff, don't you think? Okay, okay.
How old are you? Well, she was 16 when she died, but yeah, how old is she now? Isn't that the one question you're never supposed to ask a woman? Fuck that. So, yeah, whatever. Well, I was born in the year 2415, and then was put into stasis for I don't know how long. And then I lived for another three years and died about 622 years ago at the age of 16. Okay, so you were... S uh, disregarding the stasis, you were 638 years old? So, uh, you tell me how old I am. I don't know. Really, I don't think it really matters at this point, does it? It really doesn't. But I'm curious. How do you feel about Mute? <laughs> Why not? I'm pretty sure I already know her feelings. Oh, of course. Of course that'd be one of her questions. I don't... Well, let me put it this way, I suppose. Did she have anything nice to say about me? Not really. That's what I thought. Really, I don't know much about her, other than what I've read in other people's logs. Wouldn't it be funny if they don't know anything about each other, other than what they've read in logs? And since what they've read in logs are written by people who have their own biases and they can make mistakes, that they have totally wrong impressions of each other? That would be really funny. She never talked to me, ever. I mean, she wasn't above talking about me, but no, never anything to me. And that's all I know about her. She's a gossip. See, and that's what people seem to think too, but she said that she wasn't. Or at least she wasn't as much of a gossip as people said she was. I don't even want to speak to her now. Fair enough. Alright, question seven. Why couldn't you just settle for a happy marriage? I'm not gonna fucking ask her that, mute. Did you ever have any friends? I'm trying to remember from the logs, did she? Yeah, did she have anyone she could talk to? I'm guessing probably not. After waking up from stasis, I only ever had one single friend. Oh, uh, two, I meant, now that you're here. Anyway, before, it was just her. The queen, my husband's, my husband's wife, Ryu Che Hua. I wrote about her a lot in my diary. I'll just show you, it's probably better if you read it for yourself. These are from right after I got married. Wait a minute, have I already read these, or, or are these new? Let me just check. Okay, they are new. Now I'm thinking, can I switch back to mute if I wanted to? Like, could I disable... Xian A and switch on mute? Like, juggle them? I guess I could, why not? Alright, what's the final one? Is it what I think it is, about the murder? Why did you kill all those people? Okay. Xian A, could you please tell me why she seems to think you killed people? What happened? Look, there's something you need to understand first. After waking up from stasis, I only ever had one single friend. Oh, uh, two- wait, you already said that. Anyway, before it was just her. The queen, my husband's wife, yeah. Wrote about her a lot in my diary, I'll just show you, probably better if you read it for yourself. These are from right after- wait, are you- Oh, am I gonna have to read that to- Okay, I guess I should read that first. Yeah, I think I should read that first. I think that's what it's telling me. Okay. Just Us Wives, The Pale Bride. Dear Diary, I guess it's been forever since I cared enough to write anything down. I just haven't seen much point. Since my last entry, I got married, moved into the palace, and lost my virginity. Apparently for a girl my age, none of these things are really all that weird. The Queen finally insisted on talking to me the night after I first slept with the dearest husband. I'd been expecting it. My sister warned me that she would probably be jealous. 
and I'd just have to endure it. She outranks me, and I would simply have to kowtow to her if need be. I haven't had to yet, though. We had tea together, and she at least has started by acting friendly. Wait, and she... yeah. I'm sure sister was right. I'll get the brunt of her anger soon enough, but today she was friendly. How are you holding up? She asked me, after we finished with tea. I shrugged. New trust me. I know how hard it can be for a newlywed. I've been through it myself, but I was not... But I was at least older. You probably miss your family, do you not? And that's what would be expected from any good girl. So I nodded. It gets easier with time. I had no response. I'm sorry. Am I bothering you? You can leave if you wish. I simply thought you might like some company. I wasn't sure how to respond to that either. I just clasped my hands and shook my head. I just wanted to be sure, she said. There was a long pause that followed. Finally, she asked, How was last night? It surprised me that she was willing to bring up the subject, uh, figuring that it was a uh, seg into her being vindictive towards me for sleeping with her husband. I shrugged as she continued. I just know he can be rough. Nobody ever talked about those duties with me. Then she smiled, and I felt almost like I could drop my guard. I had no idea what to expect my first time. Do believe me, I'm not jealous. That is nothing to be jealous of. But do tell me how it was. It made me think back on last night. Honestly? It was the best night I've ever had since waking up in the future. Everyone, my mother, my sister, and now my queen, warned me that it would be bad. It would be a duty and nothing more, but I honestly did love it. I would have let him keep me up all night if he had the energy for it. I guess while I was thinking about all that, I let out a slight smile. I caught myself, but not before she noticed. Oh, did you enjoy it then? She asked, touching my arm. I jumped. Please, please, be at ease. That is perfectly alright too. So long as you know it's just for him. There's absolutely no shame in that. There is none. I expected her to jump into something passive-aggressive from that, but she didn't. All she did was change the subject, and said that she really was worried about me. Maybe she isn't so bad. Yeah, she sounds alright. So, you can see. She was kind. She was good to me. She really was. I take it you want to know more about my marriage, then? What are you interested in? Um. God damn it, I. <sighs> I've been pretty good at keeping up with who people are, but I've forgotten who Che Hua is. Who is Che Hua? Is that. Is that who was just talking to her? The, the wife? Is that Che. No, that's. Wasn't it Ryu? Fuck. I can't go back anymore. Mmm. Damn my terrible memory. Well, let's go with Che Hua. Then you're in luck. She's in all of these entries. I... well, she was really the only thing in my life worth writing about, for the most part. Wait, I thought it was Ryu that she was... Oh, I'm getting people mixed up. There's one in there that she wrote herself, about her husband. Okay, that is the wife. Alright. And you can see for yourself, she's a lot stronger than I ever was. So you can see for yourself why, I'd, why I admired her. And, uh, we'll just read them, alright? Okay, Little Sister, the Pale Bride. Dear Diary, Attending to my husband has been easier than I was afraid it would be. Yes, and there's days when it requires more strength than usual to keep going. I'm still getting increasingly more sick, nothing will change that. But it's not so bad, really. All I have to do is dote on him and try to anticipate his desires. And he's happy with me. No abuse or anything. Sure, it's not as if I like him. He's an ugly 40-year-old man who cares only about politics and never tells me anything. Love? Well, that's certainly no concern. I don't know where I ever got the impression that was something that could happen in a marriage. I thought it was something from the past, but... Well, I was young before I got put into stasis. It must have been a mistake of childhood. Jesus Christ, that's depressing. But so long as I do as I'm told, I'm not mistreated. Like I was by my sister. And sleeping with him feels good. I really hope I don't get pregnant soon. I don't want that to stop. 
Doing that is really the only thing that makes me actually happy these days. Well, that and Che Hua's talks with me. She's nice. She keeps me company when I stay up to wait for his return. She fetches her servants to take me to bed... Uh, to take me to bed on those days I'm too feverish to sit for too long. And she just talks to me, as if I'm a friend. I don't really understand why, but I guess she really doesn't hate me after all. Do let me tell you, she said one evening, while she brushed my hair. I always wanted a little sister growing up. That's how I think of you. Does that make sense? I shrugged. It was nice of her, and it felt so relaxing to let her touch my hair like that. She wasn't waiting for a response. Anyway, by now, she knows better. She just keeps talking kindly to me. Alright, before I continue, I will be right back. Alright, I have returned. Illiterate by Ryu... Oh, that is the same person, it just... Okay, it is Ryu, it's just I didn't see her first name before. It just said Che Hua. Ryu Che Hua. Okay, that's right. Alright. Illiterate by Ryu Che Hua. The more she lives in my house, the more I am confused by the mystery that is the Pale Bride. No wonder why my husband has been favoring the Kim family lately. Their daughter seems to be the perfect woman. She's not simply a pale beauty. She's always too shy to speak at all, let alone argue. It seems to hang off, uh, seems to hang off his every word, and it turns out, is actually so completely humble in her education that she cannot even read. Or rather, she cannot read normal characters. I have, <laughs> that's right, she can read, um, she can read Korean, right? But they can't anymore? Yeah, I, th I think that was it. I have, I have observed her writing to herself, in perhaps what may be a diary. When I asked what it was, she wouldn't say, but was quick to hide it. I could not recognize a single character on her screen, however. They seemed simplified compared to, her, compared to regular writing. Perhaps she has invented a writing system just for herself? It is very strange. Did you ever receive those letters I sent to your house before you arrived? I asked her. Curious. Seemingly, she had. Did you read them? Her response was worried, as if she was scared that I would be angry to find out that she hadn't. I was not, of course. I'm sorry, I had assumed. Are you able to read? And that was when I found out that she wasn't. I offered to read them to her, to which she seemed quite she seemed quite enthusiastic. I think I am likely to leave out some parts, however. I had enough difficulty bringing myself to writing the more embarrassing parts of the family history. Bring, bringing myself to talk about them, even if I knew she would never say anything, is just far too much. Like all things with her, I cannot tell whether her enthusiasm is sincere or an effort to make me happy. This troubles me. Of course I wasn't illiterate. I could read just fine. Just not their stupid Chinese-based characters. I mean, I can understand them now. Everything except for my diary entries is translated from them. It's such a dumb way of writing, though. It makes everything come out so stilted compared to proper Korean. Well, anyway, you're showing me that because you're interested in her admonitions, right? Uh... Sure. Then here, I'll just give you the letters she sent. They give all the details, even the ones she was too embarrassed to tell me about at the time. You can probably guess which parts she cut out. It's pretty obvious. It's the incest thing that she never told me about at the time. Hmm. Having read about it now, uh, I don't really blame her. And, well, here, you can see what I mean for yourself. Okay, I believe I've already read them, correct? Let me just check. Yeah, I've already read them. Muteness by the Pale Bride. Wait a minute, how long ago was this sent? Three months after the illiterate one? Okay. Dear Diary, I've been thinking a lot about how close my death must be now. Lately, I've been getting prone to fainting spells. It probably goes right along with my diminishing appetite. If the doctor from the past was right, I've still got over, uh, over a year left to live, maybe more. He said it wasn't very likely to get bad enough to kill me until I was at least 18. Although, maybe all those years in stasis might have changed that, I don't know. But if he was right, and if I haven't lost track of time, I'm 16 and a half right now, so there's still a while. Wait, she died when she was 16, so apparently it didn't last. Hmm. 
I've been trying to hide I've been trying to hide the signs of sickness. Even if I could explain, I know full well that nobody would believe me. So far hiding it has been mostly working, although I did have one of my fainting spells while my husband was on top of me. He wasn't angry at me though. I don't think he cared. I know all I write about these days is sex with my husband and conversations with his wife. The Kim family would be proud, I guess. <laughs> but those two things are all that really are all that's really worthwhile in my life. I have other responsibilities, of course. There's just uh, they're just not that interesting, and that's about it. Anyway, the queen has continued to be nice to me. She finally figured it out. We were having tea together one afternoon. She was talking about nothing in particular, and she asked me some questions that I just shrugged to. I hope you do not take this the wrong way, she then said, but there is something I would like to ask you. I nodded. I don't think I've ever heard your voice before. I nodded again. Why don't you ever speak to me? Are you just saving that for the Emperor? I didn't know how to respond. She was so close to getting it. To bringing up the subject I wasn't able to. Yet that wasn't the right question, so I shook my head and hoped that her next question would be. It was. Then, Hyane, she said, uncertainly. Are you mute? I felt like screaming, yes, at the top of my lungs. I was so happy that she'd finally figured it out. I smiled and was about to nod enthusiastically, but suddenly I stopped. What if she thought less of me if I said yes? If she knew that the reason I was so quiet and demure wasn't because of any sort of discipline. Those were the things people liked about me. Would she stop liking me if she knew? What if she told my husband? I was so terrified, I couldn't think of any correct answer. If I said no, I'm sure she would have asked to hear what my voice sounded like, and I'd be forced to disobey. And if I nodded, then she'd known I wasn't really just trying hard to be a good wife. And I'm sure she would talk to my husband about it if she'd know too. If he'd know too. Uh, wow. So he'd know too. But while I stared at her in terror, thinking of how to respond, she sighed and sipped her tea. Don't worry about it, she said. You do not have to answer. Please, do forget that I even asked. Wait a minute, she's mute. Like... She's mute like she literally can't speak? Wait, hold... Hmm. Hold on a second. Let me go forward with this, but I have some interesting ideas. You know, nobody ever noticed that until her. Nobody cared. Nobody ever thought any of it, or cared enough about me to find out. But she did care. She actually paid attention. She was great. So wait, she... Wait, she was mute. I mean, mute means, like, you can't talk, right? Not just by choice? Yeah, yeah. So, wait... If Hyun A was mute, then why is there another AI called Mute? That can't be a coincidence, right? <laughs> Ironically, the other AI called Mute is known to be a gossiper. Is that just a little joke, or is there actually something into that? Hmm. I'm not sure if I should read anything into that. Arguing the Emperor by Ray Ryu Chehua. My concern over the Pale Bride's condition has grown. Has grown. Lately, she has seemed to grow even quieter. If such a thing is possible for a mute girl. Well, perhaps saying she's mute is an assumption too far on my part. I tried asking her directly, but she seemed too scared to answer. That simply makes me more suspicious, and I should like to know why. I addressed my husband on the matter, telling him that I wished to speak to the woman... The... Woman of the Kim family house, to see if I could find out what is wrong. He shrugged me off, saying, Don't. They're valuable subjects. The son is someone I have my eye on in particular. The politics of the situation... The politics of the situation are far too delicate for you to be meddling with. I cleared my throat. He might be both my husband and emperor, but I would not let that stop me from being bold. My dear husband, I don't care, I said flatly. I am worried about the girl and I believe that talking to her mother might shed some light on the matter. The son is of no concern to me. I don't see why it matters. She's the perfect woman. Why? Are you jealous? He said, rolling his eyes at me. A gesture that he's only been able to use on me and his servants ever since becoming emperor. Nobody had the patience for it when he was a child, 
and I don't have it now either. Inho, dearest, do you believe that the well-being of your wife is a political matter, or even an external matter? I asked. He didn't. So would you say it's a domestic matter? I asked. He reluctantly agreed. Then as a domestic matter, it is the responsibility of the woman of the house, is it not? Please tell me, you are obviously more well-read in the classics than I, I said, both of us knowing that he wasn't. Fine, he said, but just because it is your responsibility does not mean I can't overrule you. He left silent the follow-up. I don't have to take this from you. You do know that my concerns are valid, though, I replied. If you value my opinion, you will let me speak to the Kim mother. There was a pause, then he raised his hand in annoyance. Very well, do it. It's women's business, I don't want a part in it, regardless. Then he just shook his head. Why must all our conversations be arguments? I smiled at him and left. He already knows the answer. I never knew about that when we were alive. Like most things, I only found out after I took over the ship's computer. It just amazes me even more. Look at her. She's a woman who actually stood up to a man and won. She wasn't clumsy like I was. She knew how to work it from her position. Isn't that so amazing? Why did she have to die? Okay, when was this sent? This is almost exactly a month after the last one. Was that Ryu Chehua? Dear Diary, you always forget how terrible it is to cry yourself to sleep until it happens. It's just the ultimate feeling of helplessness. But what's new there, right? I just miss her. Even if she scared me, I miss her so damn much. Che Hua was the only one who was sympathetic to me. Why did she have to die? Is that my fate? Anything that makes whatever short life I have bearable must go? Fate just hates me, I've decided. I don't know what killed her. I overheard one of the servants saying that the doctor claimed it was too much worry causing an excess of wood in the spleen, which he claimed to be common in oversensitive women. I was baffled by the absurdity at the, at the time. I still am now. My only friend is dead, and her diagnosis is absolutely insane. What do you even say to something like that? Well, I guess it's not like I need to worry about knowing what to say. <laughs> but in light of that, it doesn't surprise me that nobody ever believed I was sick. With medicine that stupid, why would they? All it does is reinforce how hopeless everything is. I just constantly wonder, why did my father, or my own doctor, think that people would be smarter in the future, that medicine would be better? My servant has been helping me get through all the funeral stuff. Well, I mean, she's been guiding me through the rites, practically doing them for me, really. I'm so weak and so stunned, I don't even know how I've been getting out of bed. I couldn't describe any of the ceremony, it's all a blur. There's been lots of black dresses, I suppose. Uh, that's my only impression. And crying. Lots of crying. From me. I... look. Please, do you trust me? Yeah, yeah, I do. Please understand my position at the time. My world was so small and I just lost my only friend. And then I, well, I'll give you my last two diary entries. They, they have the whole story. Just please don't judge me while you read them. Please. <laughs> Whoa, back to hell, I'll kill them all. Okay, what happened? Okay, so. This one is, like, two weeks after the previous one. Back to hell. Dear Diary, this sounds so pathetic to say, I've tried rewriting this a million times just to make it sound less pathetic for me, and I simply cannot. There were two things that made life worthwhile, two things that made this last year, before I die, be bearable. The first was Che Hua's company, being the one person that was friendly to me. The second is sharing a bed with my husband. For the past few months, that's what I've been saving all my energy for. That brief, precious half hour every few nights where I feel fulfilled. If only in the most literal sense. It's the most lovely feeling, and now I'll never feel it again. 
the two things making my last year of life worth living gone forever. The past few nights I've been trying to get the Emperor's attention in that way, pleading silently for his affections, with no luck. On the fourth, or was it the fifth, day, he finally took me aside and said, painful annoyance in his voice, Enough! Stop that! It is completely inappropriate! You're supposed to be in mourning, show some damned chastity! Or, you do ha or do you have no respect for my wife and your queen at all? He snapped. When I looked confused, he just lectured me. When I cried, he sighed, held me tightly, then left the room. I haven't spoken to him since, but later that day my servant came to my room with good news. I was to go visit my family for a couple months, while the house is in mourning for, Chue, for Che Hua. I couldn't argue, of course, even if I was able to. So just like that, I was sent back to hell. I was dressed in the usual veil, so nobody would see my face, as I was escorted back to the Kim house in the middle of the night. Mother and father were there, briefly, to greet me, and in spite of how I felt about them, I put on my bravest smile and bowed, and nodded politely to their questions about how I was doing. Then they had to go to bed, and left, leaving me alone with sister. Yang Sook was nowhere to be seen. Hi, she said. I never thought you'd end up visiting us again so soon. I shrugged. Well, let's have some tea. It's just us still around, she said. I nodded. It seemed like a good idea, a good enough idea. There was a pause. Well, go make it, she snapped, removing any doubt that she might treat me with any sort of friendliness. Of course I made the tea. I don't disobey her anymore. Thanks, she said. So, young Sok is out, attending to official business at the moment. But you should avoid him. He's still angry at you because father-in-law finds you more important to the family than his own son. Can you blame him? I had no idea what she was talking about, and she just continued. So you really shouldn't talk to him. Oh, I guess you can't really do that, can you? Aha! Well, you know what I mean. Yes, I knew exactly what she meant. I'm surprised you're back so soon, though, especially now that you don't have to share your husband. Does that mean you're the primary wife now? I didn't know. Does that make you queen? Oh, what great fortune you have! Father-in-law must be so proud of you. I stared at her, wishing nothing more than to be able to kill her through sheer force of rage. How could she possibly say something so awful? My only friend was dead, and here she was, taunting me? What an awful thing to do. But I couldn't hate her to death, no matter how much I tried, so instead I tried holding back angry tears to hide my weakness. I couldn't do that, either. Just please keep reading. I'll kill them all. Okay, what the hell happened? Okay, so she's supposed to be back with her old family for, what, a few months or something? And this was a little bit less than a month after the previous one, so presumably she's still with her family and hates it. And she's being treated like shit. And her only friend is dead. And the only other thing that made her happy, her husband, is nowhere to be seen. I mean, you know, she's nowhere around him. So she's with people she hates, and she has nothing good in her life at all, and she's about to die. I'm keeping that in mind as I read this. Dear Diary, I was far too feverish to do any real cooking, so my servant was doing all the work for me that night. When Father came in, I think he was drunk, or maybe just tired, or stupid. You know, child, he said to me, you grew up to be a wonderful daughter. I was shocked to hear him say that, and waved my servant out of the kitchen. I never heard even the slightest indication of that before. For the briefest moment, it even made me happy to hear that. That surprised me, that I actually felt that way. As a kid, I never would have wanted his approval. So why now? He continued to make me wonder when he asked, Do you remember when, uh, what you were like as a child? I nodded but I wasn't certain I did. You were so temperamental. You argued all the time. You didn't want to get married when the time came. You just didn't ever know your place, you know? That's right, I didn't. And that was back when I thought there was a point to being defiant. Why was that, I wondered. And that's the part that amazes me now. I tried to think of a reason why I might want to be defiant, why I valued independence, and at first I couldn't even think of anything. I'd forgotten, I'd forgotten entirely. Don't tell Young Sok, but it really scared me. 
You were always the family's best hope for prosperity, but that attitude of yours... I thought I'd never managed to disavow you of those crazy, uncivilized ideas of yours, he said, while I tried to think of what they were. There were times I thought it was a mistake to have hatched you, but you came through. You really did. I know it must have been painful, but I'm proud of you. Then he patted me on the head. You turned out to be a good girl. That's all I wanted to say. It was hard raising you to be a proper woman, but you've turned out to be perfect. Thank you, he said. I stared, speechless, and I tried to remember. What crazy uncivilized ideas was he talking about? Thinking back to those days, or back to before I was frozen, I tried to remember. I had dreams of what adulthood would, adulthood would be, but they were so unimaginably different from what the reality turned out to be that they seemed impossible. Completely impossible, nothing more than childhood fantasies without a shred of realism to them. I tried to think of what they were, to imagine them. In those dreams, I was strong, independent. I wasn't just a wife in those dreams, I had a job. Working as the ship's engineer, following in the footsteps of my father, my real father. I wasn't married in those dreams. I was happy just to go on dates with boys my age in the ship's plaza, plaza and fall in love before making any commitments. I dreamed of being free. The more I thought about it, the more I was certain. And that's what those dreams were about. That's what I'd wanted. But father, Kim Chung Su, rather, had made sure to disavow me of those notions. I learned to stop arguing, to stop trying to fight, to stop dreaming of those things. In other words, I learned how to be a proper woman. And he was proud of that. Proud of destroying my dreams. And now I would die under the house of that man, silenced, broken, hopeless, and unloved. I was overwhelmed by the strongest feeling I had ever felt in my life, the deepest bitterness, the most powerful resentment I could imagine. I looked at the knife near my hand and wondered, could I kill him? Before I died, could I at least have justice? I tried to lift the knife, my hand twitched, and it was too hard to keep a grip. I was just too weak. I'd never be able to do it. He smiled at me and said, Sorry, please, go ahead and keep cooking. I won't distract you more. Then, just as he was about to go out the door, he added, Take care of yourself. At that moment, I vowed that I would. I wouldn't worry any more about all those people who had hurt me. I'd take care of myself. I couldn't stab him to death, I was too weak for that. But then I remembered. There were other ways. If I disable life support, I can kill him. And all the others too. It'll be quick. It'll be easy. And not a one of them don't deserve it. All I need to disable it is the admin password. It's perfect. Man, I don't blame her at all. Not one bit. And holy shit, this is... This is one of the most powerful bits of writing and disturbing... Disturbingly powerful bits of writing that I've seen in the game so far. This part right here. Her father, her, not her real father, but her father, was proud of destroying her dreams. And she would die under the, in the house of that man. Silence, broken, hopeless, and unloved. And while thinking about that feeling, with absolute hatred for this disgusting person that was proud of having destroyed her dreams, and she was trying to lift a knife to see if she could kill this person. And he smiles at her and says, Sorry, please, go ahead and keep cooking. I won't distract you more. Holy shit. That, wow. There's something about that part of this that makes me almost cry. That, wow, I'm just, fuck. I don't even know how to talk about that, but that is... <sighs> Just, wow, <laughs> that's about all I can say. Well, so, there you are then. Now you know, it's, it's true, I, I did do what she said I did. I'm not going to lie, I really... I really wish you'd never met her. 
I wish she'd never said anything to you. I just thought it was so nice the way things were with us before. Things started out so well. I got to be cheery for the first time in my life since I was a child. Talking about actual romantic things together. Having fun with cosplay. And just, you know, having someone there to talk to. Someone who wasn't interested in shutting me up. But now, well... Please, you read my diary. You have to know it's not... I didn't... You have to understand, right? Even... Even if you think what I did was wrong. Look, I've never really been dishonest with you. Fine, I lied about being an AI, but I told you the truth. I could have deceived you, but didn't. Please. You still trust me, right? I'd never really lie to you, not seriously. You don't have to think what I did was acceptable, but... Please tell me you trust me. I do. <laughs> I, I truly do. I trust her. I trust you. You... do? Really? Oh my word. I mean, of course, I... I'm so sorry. I should have had faith in you. I really should have. I'm really bad at this. But thank you. Thank you so much. I can't believe I even doubted you for a second. Look, I... that means a lot to me. It means so much. I mean, I'm sure what I did wasn't right. I know. I'm sure you don't think it was. I just want you to understand, alright? For someone... For someone as good to me as you've been. Wait, 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 wait. Wait a minute. H hold on. <laughs> Holy shit, I just realized something. The... I think... Okay, a couple times in the past, the dialogue has, like, started to be written out, and then it uh, disappears, and, you know, it comes back. I thought that was a bug in the game. It's not. I just realized that. It's not a bug. That's her... That's her saying something and then quickly changing it. That's her correcting herself. Look at... Look at this. For someone I'm in love... For someone as good to me as you've been, I want you to at least please understand. For someone I'm in... She was going to say for someone I'm in love with. And that makes me so unbelievably giddy and, like, blushy, I don't even know what to say. Oh, Christine, love, why do your games have to be so unbelievably cute? Painfully cute. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm giddy, I'm giddy. Giddy that this AI in a computer game I'm playing is in love with me. I'm just taking a step back to observe how bizarre that is. But okay, now casting that aside, that is... oh, man. <laughs> okay, let's keep going. For some reason, I can't stop smiling. I, I don't know why. <laughs> oh god, what's happening to me? For someone as good to me as you've been, I want you to at least please understand. You don't have to forgive me, just hear me out. Of course. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're... you're really a good person. Much better than me. Thank you. Then, very well, it's probably just better if I show you. There's a data block that contains all of the logs that matter, but my family encrypted it because, well, it should be obvious why after you read it. You need to drop to the terminal and type decrypt block 7. Let me know once you've done that and I'll show you. Decrypt block 7. Let me write that down. I don't remember whether there's a space or not. So I'll find out. Okay. Let's do this. Uh, decrypt block... I don't think there was a space. 7? Yep, there we go. Block successfully decrypted. Very well. These are uh, really hard for me to read. I haven't I haven't seen mine since I wrote them, and I haven't seen my family's well ever. Hmm. 
Well, I think I found... Here, I've added some. Just please, read them. If you want to know the whole story, those entries will explain. Alright, let me save the game. I'm 80% in. I think I'm going to end this episode here, because I've actually been recording for about two hours. Uh, somehow my voice has managed to survive. That, I don't know how, but I think I better stop before it totally falls apart. But, before I do that, I'm going to do something. I want to try one of the other cosplays. Now dressed up as a maid. I'm, I'm hoping she doesn't see that as, like, me putting her in her place as a servant. I hope... I, I mean, she made the designs, so I presume she just thought it was cute. Because I'm not trying to make her a servant, I just want to see what it looks like. Oh my god. <laughs> Welcome back, master! What may I do for you? Well, tell me, what do you think? It's... Um, I mean, it's adorable, but... The idea of having you as a servant, given everything that's been happening, everything that's been happening, everything that's happened to you and women on the ship, is pretty disturbing. Uh, but... It, uh, it's adorable. On its own. In context, it's... Weird. But on its own, it's adorable. Really? Thank you. I'm happy to hear you like it. I mean, I already know that I'm... Oh, I didn't get to read that. Hold on, what did she say? I mean, I already know that I'm good-looking, it's not like I... Oh. Ah, oh, jeez, what am I even saying? I just think it's fun dressing up like this, and I'm happy you agree with me. I've dressed up for others before, but never anyone I really liked. It's a really different feeling. It's, uh, how do I put this? Hmm. Well, even if you think I look cute, I'm sure you think this is at least a little bit embarrassing, right? Yeah, okay, it's a, a little yeah. It's a little bit. Of course, it sort of is, isn't it? That's the fun of it, isn't it? Putting yourself in that sort of position by choice? Because you really, uh... No, I still don't know how to say it. Hey, what were you gonna say? Putting yourself in that sort of position by choice because you really... Jeez, I'm just going to stop now before I make an even bigger mess for myself. <laughs> As that would be ironic for a maid, wouldn't it? Oh my god. Ha <laughs> ha, very funny, Hyone. Well, shall we get back to more serious stuff? I'd be happy to help with whatever you'd like. Okay, I'm going to switch you back to the scientist. Um, I think I've tried them all, haven't I? Let me check. Alright, schoolgirl was default, handbook, maid, detective, si yeah, okay, I've tried them all. Well, let's go back to the scientist, and that's my favorite. Whoops. Does she say anything when you switch back? No, she doesn't. Okay. Okay. So, I hope everyone has enjoyed so far, and I will be back soon. And oh my god, Hyane loves me. She's so fucking cute and adorable and all for cosplay. Okay, bye.